Good evening, saints, and welcome to our celebration of worship this Christmas Eve. And I'd ask you to all stand with me in body or spirit and join me in our gathering hymn, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Oh, we are celebrating communion tonight also. If you've not gotten your, uh, uh, your communion elements, they're in the bowl back and if you're in the, in the back of the sanctuary. And if you're worshiping with us online, any bread or, any bread or juice or wine will do to, if you want to join us for communion. Uh, let's sing together our gathering hymn. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Please join me in singing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Advent resets the church clock and calendar and begins a new year. It announces itself against the status quo because it lights a candle while the world continues to extinguish the lights of hope. Advent places us between two worlds, the present one and the world to come. As we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, we look forward to the fulfillment of his second coming. This new rule will begin an era of peace. Four promises continually offered to us by God. And all of them manifest in this one that we light tonight. The Christ name. In Christ, we find the hope of transformation. The peace that follows justice the joy of self-fulfillment in community, and the love that encompasses us all in our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ, we find light and life, and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. We light these as a sign of the coming light of Christ. As the angel said so long ago, Behold, there is good news of great joy for all people, for to us is born a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Great God of light, who came at night when all was still, so enter our lives this night. Illumine our paths with the light of God's presence, that we may clearly see the way before us, the truth to speak, and the life to live for him, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the hymn of the, uh, the, the prayer of invocation. Glorious God, we thank you for giving us the gift of Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is sadness, give joy. Where there is discord, give great peace. Come, Lord Jesus, be light for our darkness, for the hour of your birth is near. Come, Lord Jesus, be born in our hearts through faith. Glory to you in the highest, O God. Glory in the highest. Amen. Please join me in singing, What Child Is This?
centuries before that blessed night, the prophet wrote these words of expectation. Listen for the word of God. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy, and they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in the battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. May the Lord bless us with this holy reading. Amen. Stars are brightly shining. It is the light of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, and And the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Christ was born. O night, give on, O night, O night, give on. To love one another is law, is love, and his gospel is peace. Change shall he strike from the hand of our brother, and in his name. All oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of praise, the grateful chorus raises. Let all within us praise his holy name. Christ Oh. 
Reading from the Gospel, it's Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinus discovered Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and the family line, he went up to the city north of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city, called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven 
and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. And they went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. And the shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Out of abundance of precaution, we won't have kids, little or big, come up and get close to me. I don't want to breathe on anybody. But I do have candy canes as my Christmas custom, and these are the real thing. These aren't those multicolored, you know, uh, uh, rainbow kind of candy canes. Those aren't the real thing. These are the real deal. They're white with the red stripes, the white, the purity of Christ, the red being Christ's blood shed for us. And there's even one uh, one group of three lines, which is the, the Trinity, and then the one broad line is, is Christ's grace, and it's shaped like a shepherd's crook or a J, and so we know that. And I'm going to put these in the back. I've got a whole bowl, a whole basket of them, and so the kids who want a candy cane can get one this evening before, uh, as worship is over. Here, Karen, I saved one for you. You're welcome. And join me in our hymn of praise, the first.
Christmas to Remember, taken from the Scarlet Letter Bible by Casper Green. At that time, an executive order was issued from the White House that there should be a nationwide census. This was the first such census and was taken while Quayle was senator of Indiana and everyone then traveled back to their hometown to be counted. Now, since Joe was part of the David family, he went from Nowheresville in Timbuktu up to David's family's hometown, Chicago, Illinois. He went taking with him his fiance Mary, who was pregnant, and while they were there, the baby came, and Mary gave birth to her firstborn child, a boy. She wrapped him in some old rags and laid him in a storage bin in a garage because, well, they couldn't afford a room even in West Englewood. <laughs> Meanwhile, up by O'Hare Airport, there were taxi drivers gathered in a parking lot waiting through the night for, di for dispatch. And suddenly, a messenger from God stood there in front of them, and a divine aura rippled through the air all around them. They were terrified. But the messenger said, don't be afraid. See here, I've, I've got great news for you. Great news for everyone. Well, today, down in West Englewood, your Savior has arrived. He's the one destined to lead you. And here's how it'll all go down. You'll find a baby wrapped in rags in a storage bin. Again, Suddenly, a whole convention of messengers appeared singing about God, saying, Glory to God in heaven, and may God's favorite people be at peace. And when the messengers had evaporated back into the sky, the taxi drivers said to one another, Well, let's go down to West Englewood and see if we can find out what's going on there. So they drove fast. And they found Mary and Joe and the baby in a storage bin. And when they saw it, they told the story they'd heard about this child. Everyone who heard it was incredulous about, about what the taxi drivers had said. But Mary remembered all these things, and she wondered about them. Well, the taxi drivers went back thanking God because everything they'd heard and seen was exactly as the messenger had told them it would be. And in the midst of the imperial effort to make sure everyone is counted, the gospel unfolds among all the people who had been forgotten. Whoever, wherever you live, Wherever you reside, there is some place in a city near you that has been overlooked by the people who are writing the history books. It's where the working class people hang out nights waiting for work. It's, it's where the people who can't afford even the cheapest hotel rooms pass the night in back seats of their cars with all of their worldly possessions jammed into the trunk. Wherever you live, somewhere nearby, there is a place where teenagers give birth to babies out of wedlock and without health insurance or prenatal care, who still have hopes that their child will, will grow up to be somebody special, or at least they won't end up in a morgue or a prison before age two or seven or 17 or 25. Perhaps they have these hopes for their forgotten children to have a chance because some crazy taxi driver on the trip to the emergency room delivery reassured them that it was so. But what makes the Christmas story so real is well, that contrary to what we may think most of the time, the crazy taxi driver relocated from some place we have trouble finding on a map and who hardly knows how to speak English, the taxi driver is right about this child. And if God has anything to do with it, she will grow up to lead her people 
out of the projects. But for this to happen, the rest of us who hear the story also need to recognize the truth of the taxi driver's witnesses instead of being incredulous. The rest of us have to recognize and believe who this forgotten one, born of forgotten parents, really is. In other words, the rest of us have to come to terms with our intentional forgetting, our dismissal of those places and people as being of so little or no real consequence. The whole gospel that follows is predicated on the story about how, contrary to what you might hear in some churches, God lives out in the garage and in all the children born in forgotten places. Nothing Jesus says or does in the gospel introduced by this story makes any sense if we forget that he began his life as a forgotten child. And so this Christmas, here's hoping we'll remember longer than for just a starlit evening. Let us come to God in prayer. God of mystery and might, we praise and worship you. For you came in silence while all lay sleeping to enter our world as a child of humble birth. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, born of your handmaid, Mary. In his face we behold your glory, for in his life, as in his death, is your gift of salvation. Gracious God, by your Spirit, make our hearts burn with thanksgiving, that we may give as we have received. Let our whole lives be gifts of praise to you, God of love and peace, by the power of your Holy Spirit, in the gracious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who has taught us to be bold to pray these words to you, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our offering tonight... Uh, we're receiving it in the, in the uh, offering basket in the back as we have been uh, for the last year or so, so we're not passing plates to each other. Um, our offering will, will go for our Christmas joy offering and also to support the mission and ministries of, of our local church as well. You can read interpretation about the Christmas joy offering on the insert in your bulletins. And so join me now in the call for the offering. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. We wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Now we bring our tithes and offerings.
good and gracious night on this eve that we await your coming. In this time we celebrate your having come. We bring to you this offering, a token of our sacrifice, and we dedicate it to you, Lord, and to your church, the body of Christ on earth. Through this offering, Lord, might your gospel be known to all your creation and all of your children in it. This we pray in Jesus' name, and may all God's people say, Friends, we celebrate an open communion in our congregation and in our denomination. All of those who trust in Christ as their Lord and Savior are beckoned to come to this table of sacrifice that he has prepared for us. I share with you the, that which was given to us. Paul and Luke both write that on that night of his arrest, Jesus sat and he ate that Passover meal with his disciples and he he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you, take and eat. In the same way, after the meal, our Lord took the cup He raised it to them, saying, This cup contains my blood, the blood of the new covenant shed for forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. And whenever you drink from this cup and eat from this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. Bread and wine, these are the things of God for the people of God. Let us come to God in prayer. Good and gracious God, we come to you in humble prayer you have beckoned us to this table, unworthy as we may be, Lord, you call us anyway. And here we take these elements of bread and wine that are common and ordinary in our daily use, and we set them apart. And we dedicate them to you and to your saving grace in our lives. For from the beginning of time, gracious God, you have established covenant with your people. Willful that we might be, short-sighted and, and shorter of memory, we, we wander, we stray from your calling, we soon find ourselves lost and alone, frightened, without hope. 
We cry out to you, Lord, for saving, and you, you send us prophet and priest and king to return us to you, and gladly we come running back. But again, we're short-sighted. Again, we're short of memory. Again, we find ourselves straying and lost, alone. And so, gracious God, you establish a covenant with us, unbreakable. You come to us as one of us in the person of Jesus the Christ, offering us this covenant unbreakable once and for all, now, forever. In these elements of bread and wine, Lord, they represent your body broken, your blood shed for us. In these elements, Lord, may we know your presence ever real among us here that we might nourish ourselves in your spirit, strengthen ourselves as your church going forth, Lord, as your apostles carrying your word to the world. All of this, Lord, we pray to you in the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Friends, we'll partake of communion this evening again using these wonderful uh, little lunchable type cups. Uh, you can see bread on one side and then you tip the cup over and that's got the juice on the other. We'll begin, uh, you peel the bread off, the bread cover off. And friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. After the meal, he took the cup. You can peel that side off simply. This cup is the blood of Christ shed for our sins. Let us drink together from the cup of salvation. Join me in the recommittal prayer. Empower us by your spirit, O God to be Christ's presence in the world, even as Jesus was God with us. Give us courage to speak his truth, to seek his justice, and to love with his love. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Joyce, would you turn the fans off, please? Thank you. Now we'll pass the light from the Christ candle and uh, so that we uh, don't drip hot wax on ourselves or get burned or anything like that. I urge you to um, tip or leave the lit candle upright and tip the unlit candle to receive the light as uh, we pass it. Okay, yeah.
Stand with me for our postlude hymn. Joy to the world, the Lord. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let us go from this place in peace with the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you now and forever. Thanks be to God and amen. Have a Merry Christmas.